this video, we're going to be talking about photography and we're going to offer a couple of tips to think about while you're doing photography in different places around Spencer. So let's look at this first one. This illustrates the challenge that most cameras don't handle the range of light and dark as well as a human eye can. So if a human eye was looking at this scene, we'd be able to see the oil painting that Laura has on her easel as well as the sky but the camera is more limited. So the camera is trying to make the light and dark range good for the sky, but then that means that the painting itself is very dark. And while this might be a good effect for some types of pictures, in this case, we wanted to show both the painting that Laura had done and the background. So you can see here that by using the default setting of having the sky and the building to have enough lightness and darkness to be able to see the details there, the oil painting that's below has ended up being too dark. So how do you fix this? In this version, you can see that the oil painting itself is now easier to see. It's not so dark. But in comparison, the sky has become very, very bright. And again, this is because of the way cameras work. Cameras work with a range of light to dark, and it's not as wide as the range that human eyeballs have. So either the dark areas can be seen or the light areas can be seen but often it can't see both of them at the same time with the same degree of clarity. So now that we've got a picture where the sky is good, but the painting is too dark, and then also a picture where the painting is good, but the sky is too bright, you can use a technique to combine the two of those together and create an image that has a good range in both areas. This is also called HDR, and many cameras can do this in camera. So let's take a look. So in this version here, you can see that the oil painting by Laura Senadella is nice and clear. And also the background is clear and the sky is clear. So this sort of thing is done by creating layers. A camera can do that automatically for you with HDR, or you can do it in the software package on your computer. So the trick is that you want the camera to be very steady while it's taking these different pictures. You can use a tripod. And that way, when the camera or the software or whatever is going to be making the layers is adding them all together, everything's in the exact same place so that the easel ends up in the same place in each one and the building ends up in the same place. And that way, the colors and everything all work properly. So if you're going to try to deal with this kind of situation, it's good to put the camera on something sturdy, like a stone wall or something like that, or to have a tripod if you're able to have a tripod to work with it. Here's a landscape scene from St. Joseph's Abbey, and we're having the same problem here. The camera exposed for the sky, so the sky is nice and rich and blue, but that means that the lower area is so dark that you can barely tell there is a fence there. And again, this has to do with the camera's limitation, that the camera isn't able to handle the darkest darks and the brightest brights all at the same time. So in order to fix this, you can either use the HDR or multiple levels, or you can bring it into a computer program after the fact and do some tweaking in the shadow areas to help the shadows come brighter. So that's what I did in this example. I happen to use Photoshop, but there's a bunch of software packages that can do this. They will look into the shadow area and let you bring out the detail. So now you can actually see that there's a fence there and the cool moss patterns and all of that. So there's a number of different ways to deal with the challenge that your camera presents to you. You just need to learn some techniques and be creative about what you're doing. This image here has a number of challenges to it. So let's talk about the same dark and light issue from before. The sky is so bright that it made the camera adjust for the brightness of the sky, which meant the whole middle area, which is probably what we're trying to take the picture of, has become quite dark. You can barely see that there's trees and you can see a little bit of detail in the building itself, but a lot of it is lost. And then the grass becomes sort of a gray, muddy area in the middle so that it doesn't present much interest as well. So one of the first things that you can do here, if you wanted to keep this angle for some reason, is you want to adjust the exposure. So in this version, you can see it's a little better. The background building is clearer and easier to see because it's gotten lightened. And you'd probably want to darken the sky to make it a little more blue, enrich the grass to make it a little more green and vibrant. But even if you did all of those things, there's still the question of just what is this showing? The person who's looking at it, their eye isn't really drawn to much of anything at all. There's the interesting windows on the right, and there's sort of some round shapes on the left, but the overall composition of this doesn't draw the person in to look at something and to understand more about it. So let's take a look at some composition ideas now. So take a look at this idea. This is a close-up of just one section of the church, and you get some nice repetition with the 
triangle shapes along the right with the windows in the front. You get a nice view of the sky above and the green grass below. So you have nice levels of contrast, areas of light and dark, and this tends to draw the eye in better. It's got a nice clear focus that you can look at, and it's got different levels of detail like on the stained glass windows and on the little bushes and everything else. So this tends to be more interesting to a viewer who's looking at it than something that is cluttered or has too many different things in it. What if you took this picture instead? In this one, you'd probably get annoyed that there's a giant tree blocking the thing that you're trying to look at and that there's this little bucket of something over there. So the main focus here is a tree and a bucket and you don't get to see the, the key parts of the building that you're probably looking at. So in a case like this, you'd want to relocate yourself to try to get a better angle on whatever you're trying to take a picture of. So in this one, you have the problems we saw before where the sky is a nice exposure, but the building itself then ends up being too dark. So you can barely see the building and can barely see the tower on the left. And you've also got this tree branch sticking down from the top area that's cluttering up the view and it draws the eye and it distracts you. So while this is a nice front angle on the building, you've got a number of technical problems here that you'd want to sort out. You'd want to get the forward of that branch and you'd want to work with the exposure or use HDR or something so that you've got the building not so dark. Okay, so here we have a view where we're in front of that branch that used to be off on the left-hand side, and it makes a big difference because now the branch isn't distracting us. Now we still have the problem with the darkness of the background, and that has to do again with the exposure of the sky versus the exposure of the building. And we have a problem with the big fluffy tree on the right, but there's some things you just can't move about a landscape. You have to take the best picture you can, and your choice is either to zoom in closer so that you don't have that bush at all, but if you wanted to include the tower and you wanted to include the pointy triangle thing and so on, this may be getting closer to the best angle that you can take to show all of those different pieces of it in one big picture. And then here we have a version which has the building lighter so that we can see the details of the building. The sky is still blue, the grass is still green, and we still have the problem of the big bushy tree cutting off part of it on the right, but that's just the way things go sometimes. Like I said, if you wanted to crop it down so it just had the edge of the tall tower on the right and then the circle tower on the left, then you could get most of that and not have the tree blocking the scene. But this starts to come down to your individual purpose here. If your purpose is to show the swath of this building from left to right, then you're getting this about as best as you can. And you could still do some tweaks to make the sky bluer, or to make the grass a little less vibrant or whatever you're going for in your particular picture. So these were just a couple of different thoughts about the kinds of tweaks you can make while you're taking your picture, the things to think about. Think about how light and dark things will be and think about the limitations of your camera. The more you play with the camera, the more you'll get a sense of how it handles the darker darks or the brighter brights and so on and how you can work with that to end up with the picture that you want. And also think about the composition. Is there something in the scene that draws your eye? Sort of like here that your eye gets drawn to the bench and then to the triangle shape with the three windows in it and then to the little tower behind that. You want to think about how the eye is drawn into the picture, how it moves around the picture, and you want the things the person's looking at to be reasonably clear and in focus and lit well so that the person can see them. So ask if you have any questions. Take a look at all our other videos where we talk about photography and composition and we look forward to talking with you.